Oh yeah, these were configured to hydrazine. Okay, let me just make sure that all of them were symmetrically adjusted now to MMH and N204. And another flaw that we had was we didn't have any on this stage here. Okay, so we've got those, and they're a little bit small, but that thing doesn't need to be turned very much in anyway, so. Um, hmm, more solar panels. Probably a lot more solar panels are needed. Wish we could unlock some really big ones. Well, not that big. I should just unlock to show you this. Uh, that might be a little bit big and uh, it probably doesn't give us much yeah uh, 29.2 per minute is nice hmm maybe that we should replace these with them this uh, st2 that's 1.5 per minute so times 9 here that's uh, that's 14.5 well 13.5 13.5 13.5 per minute, so this will be more than double. Just uh, two for now. Okay, well that's a start, I suppose. Oh, we've still got one hanging out there. Oh, for some reason they come with a small one behind it? That's a bit weird. Yeah, the little model shows that it has a small one behind it. Wonder why that is. Ah, uh, it blocks that one. I guess we'll just go for eight. Let's remove these. Okay, well, given that, I think the little thrusters need to be moved. Well, that hopefully will help. We've got the thrusters worked out. These are MMH and N204 now. Yep. Very important. Okay. Now the first stage. Okay, here is our stage. We still have the center engine cut out, but let's limit gimbling. Hmm, it doesn't seem like we have a way to limit gimbling. That's weird. Okay, so used to seeing that now. But okay, Verner Vernier thrusters, not burners, Verniers. Here, carrier locks. Not the same ratio as these probably take. I don't know if four of them is going to be enough. But what I'm going to do is lock the gimbling on the outside engines. 4.5 thrust, 15 degree gimbling. Is that enough? We're gonna be high in the atmosphere when the stuff happens, so putting fins on doesn't really help. Fins are more for low in the atmosphere. Well, we'll try this out. Uh, I'm gonna say this Angua Saraswati 2. I might want to go back to the previous version of this. Okay, let's see if this can launch properly, and so uh, we need to launch from from a different launch center. Okay, here we are. Uh, we are launching out of Kourou in uh, French Guiana, which is the closest location to the equator, and that's important because our contract this time requires an equatorial inclination. Uh, well, uh, it's so uh, 1.5 degrees. It's uh, yeah, basically equatorial and yep we've got the mystery goo so that's all satisfied we've got everything else it wants so we just need to get into the correct orbit all right let's see if the little verniers are good enough to help out with the maneuvering here everything gets lit and launch So right now the outside engines aren't gimbling. That should be the case. Uh, 
can't really see. Well, it still says lock gimbal here, so hold on. Okay, now that was the center engine. The, the, well, the outer engines have it locked, the inner engine does not. But we're already having some maneuvering issues, it looks like. Yeah, this is way off. I'm gonna have to free the gimbals on those outer engines. Actually, it seemed like only two of them had the gimbal locked. I wonder if I applied them in... I don't think I applied them in pairs. I thought they were in a group of four. Anyway. Okay, looking pretty stable so far. I have not shut off the center engine. And all the engines have gimbling in theory, I suppose. Okay, well that was an overcorrection. Okay, now it's got oscillations. Turning off the center engine. And that makes it settle down. I'm just going to go to 45 and then hold it in place for a while. Now it's getting wilder in pitch rather than settling down. attempt to lock gimbal on some of these. Okay, so right now only the verniers have gimbling. At least I believe that's the case. So now we're only on the verniers as far as maneuvering is concerned. Let's see if we can go to 40 safely. not having an easy time of it. So yeah, we'll have to action group the gimbal lock. We'll uh, lock the gimbals at a certain point to prevent any oscillations and maybe then this can be a uh, Kerbal rated rocket. It's looking good right now. Okay, so it can maneuver reasonably well with the verniers. Okay, and set. And J2. So, actually the fuel imbalance wasn't too bad. Uh oh, this is a little bit off. Come on J2. You've been doing a good job so far, don't, uh, don't lose yourself here. Yeah, uh, we only had a little bit of uh, extra kerosene there, so the fuel mixture wasn't uh, too different between the verniers and the, and the main engines, the H1s. But a little bit weird to see this one oscillate all on its own, so maybe we'll have to have some stabilizing engines on this stage. Perhaps just RCS will, will do, but we'll see. I mean, uh, we can't have verniers here, because verniers burn kerosene and this is hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, well, we're go for orbit, and I think we can dump the fairings now. Let's see. Yep. 
Okay, so let's see what our new probe looks like with its uh, antenna out and uh, solar panels out. This is not going to be ideal. Obviously these panels are not going to be able to face in the same direction as these. Anyway, maybe we should uh, add a larger battery to to this stage just so that I can maintain electric charge through whatever. Right now it doesn't have much of a battery. I think uh, it just has the avionics package's battery, the 30,000 here. The rest of the battery power is all in these little probe cores. Okay, all is good for orbit, and we're aiming for a higher orbit this time, a uh, higher initial orbit, a uh, safer initial orbit, if you will. But I'll probably cut out the J2 before we reach orbit so that it can re-enter properly. Okay, I'm gonna activate the antenna, the main antenna, the one that will communicate with the mission to Mars here. Yeah, uh, get in there. Up, oh, just passed it. There we go. So, uh, targets. Juna. And activate. Up, oh, time to wrap up. This is going up. Let me tilt down a bit. And we, we can throw all this one down. So let's throw all that one down. That'll help out too. Get us in a nice orbit. Sounds like it's throttled down quite a lot, but you can see that the actual current acceleration is not that much lower than our max acceleration. We've still got 860 kilonewtons there. Okay, that'll be good enough to deorbit that, so I'm going to let it go. And throttle up and ignite the RL-10. Up, we shouldn't uh, be pitched down at all. And we can shut it off now. Let's try and plot for our target orbit. Okay, that should be approximately okay. And it wants a periapsis of 13,944 kilometers to 14,500 kilometers on the apoapsis side. Okay. Higher orbit than our previous satellite. Should be fine though. Smart ESS, you need to... Oh, where's... we've got the probes. We should lock those, but it doesn't matter now anyway. This is not that kind of mission. Before the real Mars mission, we'll have to lock those. It should only be the base ones going off. This is a pretty long burn. I think we should get started here. How's our engine? Ah, very unstable! Finally, okay. Uh, you know, I, I've been a little bit worried that it. Uh, okay, now it doesn't take much to get very stable, but I've been worried that engine igniter wasn't really doing its thing. But seems like it is okay. Okay, coming up on the end of this burn. I'll shut it down there. Okay, and that's just for safety's sake. And our target inclination was 1.5 degrees. Our target longitude of ascending node 113.1. We're a little bit far off from that. But we'll make further adjustments at our apoapsis. Should be noted that the total drain of the orbital portion will be 0.25 and we're generating let's say 1.25 here so we're we're generating about five times what we need for it the lander uh, has about uh, 0.2 drain but uh, it will run completely on batteries so we're not expecting it to yeah so we just subtract its portion out uh, when it comes down to the landing though but it's got its full drain all the way there 
So whereas we have five times what we need for this orbital portion, and that might be enough once we get to Mars, uh, it probably isn't. I, I think I remember it being eight times that we actually needed. Um, on the way to Mars, we've got a problem because these will continue draining, and I've seen that if we try and shut one of these down, the whole thing doesn't work, even if we're under the mass limit. So, so yeah, that's the situation. I'm going to have to figure out how to get more solar power on this. Now, I don't have Infernal Robotics right now, because uh, as far as I know, it's not cleared with uh, RP0. It's not RP0 compatible. Uh, but obviously that would be a thing. We could pack the panels much more tightly and get a lot more solar power if we had Infernal Robotics to fold them up. But uh, yeah, I'll have to think about that. Right now it's uh, it's not just RP0 that's a uh, problem with that. It's the fact that I don't have the RAM space for it. Uh, already in this episode it's crashed a couple of times because of, uh, straight up because of RAM. So Infernal Robotics adds more parts which are going to take up more RAM which will increase the propensity for crashes. Okay, this this is gonna take a while. The RL10 part won't, but then the four little one kilonewton thrusters will. Oh, very unstable again. Hey, yeah. That's nice to see, actually. Okay, here we go. Okay, our longitude of ascending node is increasing. I don't want that. There's decreasing. Okay. This time, even though it doesn't look quite right, I'll leave it all together. We don't want extra space junk. So even though the antenna isn't out in the open as it should be, uh, I'll just leave it tucked away and we'll pretend it's alright. Because just to avoid uh, having the lander be extra space junk. Okay, set uh, RCS on for stability and there we go. Okay, well this is going to take a very long time so I'll be back with you once we're done. Okay, so we're getting close to the end of this. Uh, we are approaching the designated orbit around Earth, actually, within marginal deviation. And we can see longitude of, longitude of ascending node is pretty darn close to it. Ah, we've got it, but uh, they, they actually wanted it in a little bit of a different orbit, so I'll keep boosting for a bit. Uh, inclination was supposed to be 1.5. We, we do a little bit more like 1.6 there, but they've accepted it. And uh, the most, most important thing is, except for getting two satellites into orbit that have our longest range dishes, which hopefully will be able to cover Mars, uh, we've worked out some issues with the launch vehicle as well as with the Angua probe itself. Uh, so that has been done. And uh, we, we've worked out that uh, we have a solar power problem Though, uh, though I'm not satisfied that we have the solution to that just yet. So we'll have to continue working on potential solutions to that problem. Now, just maintaining stability for 10 seconds, and then we should fulfill this contract. So yep, uh, two contracts fulfilled, two successes, and plenty of successful launches. And so it's been a good episode, I think. Uh, we've worked out some things, and hopefully next time we'll be ready to try out uh, a launch to Mars. And, you know, if it fails the first time, that we'll learn from it and proceed from there. Alright? So with this, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.